Hi, this is Pam from Wood Camper Crafts, and I'm here with another free crochet tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, and you'll be notified when I upload new videos like this one. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this really easy cowl that I call the Whistler Cowl. If you're familiar with my designs, you know that all my patterns are inspired by the great outdoors. So this one here is named after a mountain where I've spent a lot of time snowboarding and mountain biking, Whistler Mountain. So as I said, this pattern's really easy. It only uses two different stitches and it can be completed in a few hours. Even though we're only using two stitches, you can see the combination creates this really unique texture. Before we get started, you'll need some yarn. I'm using the Red Heart, Heart Soft Essentials yarn, which I purchased from Michaels. And you'll also need a 6.5 millimeter hook. So let's get started. The cow has 30 stitches per row and 61 rows in total. In order to get 30 stitches per row, we need to start by chaining 31. So I'm going to just leave a tail here that I can weave in after and I'm going to do a slip knot. So just put your yarn over and pull up through and just pull on these two to tighten. Insert your hook and then pull down to tighten. So we're going to chain 31. Yarn over and pull through. That's one. Yarn over and pull through is two. Yarn over and pull through is three. Yarn over and pull through is four. Yarn over and pull through is five. So if you already know how to make a chain, this is very simple. I'll let you continue this on your own. So remember, we are chaining 31, or you can make your chain as long as you want. You can measure it against your own neck if you want to add a few more stitches there. You can pause this video, and I will meet you at the end of the chain. So I've finished my chain 31. And as I said before, we're going to have 30 stitches in each row. I chained 31 because when I start, I'm going to be starting in the second chain from my hook. So you can see here's the first chain and here's the second chain. So the first row is going to be a row of half double crochets. So I'm yarning over starting in my second, so there's my first, there's my second, chain from the hook, I'm inserting my hook, yarn over and pull through, I have three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all three to complete my half double crochet. When I was designing this pattern, I um, found out that I really needed to count my stitches per row or use a stitch marker. There was a number of times I had to pull out rows because I didn't have the correct amount of stitches. So I would highly recommend using the stitch marker on the half double crochet rows. So I've done my first half double crochet there. I actually don't own a stitch marker. I've been crocheting for 20 years and I've never bought one. Maybe I should invest one day. But I use this handy bobby pin. It does the same thing. You can find anything lying around at home that would work. So I'm just going to go under this front loop here and I'm going to insert my bobby pin. It's harder to do on camera. There we go. So there's my stitch marker. I have one half double crochet. So now I'm going to keep going. Yarn over, insert my hook into the next chain yarn over and pull through. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete my half double crochet. So let's do one more together. The important thing is when you are working on this chain, you want to make sure that it doesn't twist. You want to be working on the right side of the chain. 
So make sure you're keeping it flat as you're going. You can also use some more bobby pins to mark the kind of top side here that you want to be putting your crochet hook into if you're doing a really, really long chain. That's a good technique for making sure that your chain doesn't get twisted and you're working in the correct loop. So we're going to go into the next one here. Insert your, whoops, half double crochet, yarn over. Insert our hook, yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete our half double crochet. So we started with a chain 31, but because we're working in the second chain from the loop, we're only going to have 30 half double crochets in our row. So I'll let you keep working on that on your own and I will meet you at the end of the row. I've completed row one. I have 30 half double crochets in total. So now I'm going to start row two. At the end of every row, I'm going to start by chaining one. So yarn over and pull through. So I've chained one and I will then turn my work. So as I said before, we're only using two stitches. So the first stitch is the row of half double crochets. So in this row, we're going to use a um, modification of the half double crochet two together. So a half double crochet two together is normally a decrease stitch where you'll work in one stitch. So you'd work in one stitch and then you would work in the next stitch and join those two stitches together. So instead of joining two stitches together, we're going to be working just under different loops in the same stitch so that we still have 30 stitches in total in our row. So if you're looking at it from the top here, you can see your loops. So here's your stitches. You can see them all the way along. If you look at them from the top, you can see you have a front loop and a back loop. There you go. You have a front loop and a back loop. Once again, you can see your front loop and your back loop. So if we're working, looking at say this stitch here and you look at it from this angle, you can see that there's a loop almost on a diagonal just behind the stitch. So we're going to be working under this loop and also under your front loop. So that's where we're going to be placing our hook. So we've chained one. We're going to start as we would any half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over and then we're going to start by inserting our hook under this back loop, which you can see right here. So we've inserted under that back loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through. So you have three loops on your hook as you would a normal half double crochet. So we're going to start as you would your half double crochet two together. So yarn over again. And then we're going to be working under just that front loop. So if you look at it from the top here, you can see your front loop and your back loop. So we're working just under this loop here. So that's the loop we're going to be working under. So we've yarned over and then we're going to be inserting under just this one front loop here. And we're going to yarn over and pull through. So we have five loops on our hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops to complete the stitch. So let's have a look at the next one before we get started. So you can see here's that single loop that's just behind your stitch. Then you look at it from the top and you can see here is your front loop. Those are the two loops we're gonna be working in. I'm going to yarn over, insert your hook under this single loop, which is behind your stitch hard to do this on camera. There we go. Yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook and we're going to yarn over again. And it's just this loop here. If you can't see it from this angle, you can just look at it from the top, but you'll get the hang of it. And it's actually going to be really easy. 
So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. So you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all five loops to complete the stitch. So it creates almost like a, like a bit of a bobble or a cluster stitch there. So we're going in the next one here. So here is that loop that's behind your stitch. And then you can see your front loop and your back loop. So we're just working in that front loop there. So I came up with a stitch just by trial and error. I'm sure it actually has a name. So if anybody knows the name of the stitch, please leave uh, the name in the comments. I would really appreciate it. So once again, yarn over. So we're inserting our hook under just this one loop that's behind your stitch. Yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Insert your hook just under that front loop. And then yarn over and pull through. So you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. And we've completed the stitch. So I've done three here. I'm gonna let you work on that on your own since you know how to do it. So once again, looking at our next stitch, you can see that loop that just behind the stitch all on its own, you're going under there. And then looking at it from the top, you have your front loop and your back loop. So we're going under this front loop here. And you're going to continue to do that until you get to the end and you have 30 stitches in total. So you can pause this video and I will meet you at the end of row two. I've almost finished row two. I just wanted to show you the very last stitch because it can be a little tricky until you get the hang of it. So I said it was really important to use that stitch marker. I find on this modified half double crochet two together row, sometimes you can miss that last stitch. So if you're not counting or if you don't have that stitch marker, you may end up with too few stitches in your row. So you'll remember if we turn it around here, that I put my stitch marker, which is just a bobby pin, under the front loop. So when I turn it around, that stitch marker is actually now the back loop. And here's my front loop. So when you're looking at it, you can see I'm going to start by yarning over and I'm just going to be going under that loop that's behind. Yarning over and I've got three loops on my hook. So I'm going to yarn over and remember that that stitch marker is on the loop that I'm not going under. So I'm just going under this loop here. And the last stitch also can be a little tighter than the other ones and harder to get your hook in. I made it really loose so that I can show you on video and it's easier to do, but you might have to get that yourself a helping hand with that last stitch. So yarn over and pull through. We have five loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. When I was designing this pattern, at first I wasn't using a stitch marker and I was halfway through the project and found out that I had too few stitches. So I had to rip out a lot of my work. So once again, can't say enough how important it is to use that stitch marker. So now I'm just gonna take out that stitch marker and you can use it in both rows. I find that I really only need it um, on that half double crochet, that first half, half double crochet, but feel free to use it on both rows. So I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. So I'm chaining one and turning. So that's the entire pattern. That's all you need to new, do. So we're doing a row of half double crochets. There are 30 stitches in the row. And then we're doing a row of that modified half double crochet two together. So you just keep doing that until you have 61 rows in total. If you want yours a little bit longer, you can add more rows. You can add as many as you want. So I'm just going to start this row off with you. So we're going to yarn over, insert my hook. Just make sure you're going under the right loops. So look at it from the top. There's my first stitch. So I'm going under these two loops here and then I'm going to yarn over 
and pull through. I have three loops on my hook and yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete my first half double crochet. So pause there for a moment, get your stitch marker, put it under just that front loop and let's keep going. I'm going to yarn over. So once again, look at it from the top. There's my next stitch. You're going under both loops, just like that. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. You're going under both loops. Yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we're just going to keep doing that. We want 30 half double crochet in total. And then when you get to the end of the row, don't forget to chain one and turn. We're using that stitch marker or we're counting. So we have 30 stitches in each row. You can pause this video and you can work on this on your own. You can sit back, relax, watch some TV. And then when you have 61 rows in total, or however many rows you'd like, I will meet you at the end of the rows and I will show you how to join your cowl together and finish off your project. I've completed my 61 rows and I'm ready to join my cowl together using a slip stitch. If you're using more rows or fewer rows, just make sure that you finish your rows on an odd number. So I started the cowl using the half double crochet and the last row I'm using is the half double crochet. Otherwise, if you finish with an even amount of rows, when you go to join it together, your hook will be on the wrong side. So you can see this is actually my the inside of my cowl. So I've put the finished sides together. So this is the finished sides and I've already lined it up here. And what I've done is I've used bobby pins. You can use anything that you have lying around the house to actually line up the ends just so that I make sure when I'm slip stitching them together that I'm all lined up here. So the last row we were working on, we did a half double crochet. So you've got your two loops here. When I'm joining them with a slip stitch, so in my final row here, I'm going to be inserting my hook under both loops. When I'm lining it up and joining it with my first row, which was my chain, I'm just going under a single loop here. So you're just going under one loop. So in my final row, I'm going through the stitch under both loops. And then in my first row, which is the chain, I'm just going under a single loop. So I have 30 stitches in each row. So when I join this, I'm going to join it with 30 slip stitches. In my final row, normally at the end of every row, I do a chain one. I didn't chain one here. So if you did a chain one, just make sure you take that out and then line up your ends and pin them so that they're in place. And then we can start joining this with a slip stitch. So I'm going to find my first stitch, which is right here. So I'm going to insert it. I'm going under both loops and then I'm going to line it up on the other side and find just that single loop. So right here I've got my single loop in my chain and this is going to be my first slip stitch. I'm just going to move that bobby pin out of the way. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete my slip stitch. So I'm going to go into the next one here. You can see I'm going under both loops in that final row. I'm going to line it up with my chain and I'm going under just one loop here. So yarn over 
and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete my slip stitch. So once again, here's my next one. If you look at from the top, you can see your two loops. So I'm going under both loops and then just make sure you're lining it up on the other side. Make sure you're not going under the same loop. So make sure you're going under your next loop. So right here, just going under my chain, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete my slip stitch. So you can work on this on your own. You can pause this video. Remember we're doing 30 slip stitches to join our cowl together and I'll meet you at the end of the row. I've finished slip stitching my cow together and I've now turned it right side out and we're all done. So I hope you enjoyed that project. If you'd like to see more projects like this, please subscribe to my channel.